I'm going to read you a headline that three people sent to me today. Toronto real estate market roars back to life, ending short-lived buyer's market. This came out today from a large publication, and of course, it's going to be the title of this video. And I want to put this in perspective. When we say that the real estate market in Toronto has roared back to life, I don't know if you've ever seen Lion King, but remember the first time Simba tries to roar, and it's like, roar but it's not a real lion's roar. That's kind of what this is. It's like if a lion cub tried to roar for the first time. My name is Tom Story. I'm a real estate agent here in the city of Toronto, and I do my best to make these types of videos to show you what is actually going on on the ground level and what the numbers are saying. If you learn anything new in today's video, all I ask is leave us a like and make sure to get subscribed to the channel. You can also book a buyer consultation or seller consultation with our team in the first link in the description. So the lion cub roaring is a good analogy. Another one I was thinking is like, if the speed limit was 100, we're driving 40 kilometers an hour right now, but in December, it felt like we were driving maybe like 10 kilometers per hour. So it's picking up, but what's been interesting, and I'll show you the numbers here in a second, is that prices didn't change that much from at the end of last year. In fact, they went down. So let's take a look at what the numbers are actually saying, and we'll try to figure out what the heck is going on together. All right, we're gonna get started with the year over year number. So in the left column here, you see number of sales that happened in January, just over 4,000 which is 37% higher than January of 2023. January of 2023 was historically slow. So that is a better way to start the year than we started last year. New listings, 8,000. So we had a few more listings that we had at the same point last year. Active listings were in the same range. Average price was actually slightly lower than it was at the beginning of last year, about 1% difference. But year over year numbers are going to make the headlines, but I think there's more to the story. So let's go over some of the key data. So we talked about the fact that sales volume is up 37% year over year. That's going to be a headline you're going to see somewhere, okay? But prices were actually down month over month. And I'm going to show you exactly what that data looks like. But then sales, number of transactions from December to January went up 22%. Inventory also came down and overall listings stayed under 11,000. So when people are saying that it feels like the market is picking up, it's because yes, technically there is less to choose from and there were more sales that have happened, but it hasn't been reflected in price yet. So we're gonna have to see how many months in a row is inventory going to drop. This is giving you what the last 13 months looked like going back to the beginning of 2023. We started with over three months of inventory and then it really dropped off and then it built back up over four months at the end of last year. So what we talked about at the beginning of this video is yeah, Technically, we are no longer in a buyer's market. That is true, but it still kind of feels like one, even if the numbers maybe don't show it. But from November to December to January, inventory dropped from four months of inventory in the city of Toronto to about three. So that shows that almost 25% of active listings are no longer available. So there is a little bit less to choose from, but still very much in that balanced market territory. Okay, so inventory is a little bit down. Sales volume is a little bit up. What about prices? So let's start with condos. This is showing the last 13 month of condo prices. I'm going to compare it back to the beginning of last year. We're pretty much the same. So the average condo price in the city of Toronto as of January 2024 was $709,000, almost identical to what it was in December. So month over month, not a real change in average price, but there was more transactions that took place. Here's a more in-depth view of what the numbers had done. As we had talked about last year, they really ran up in the first six months of 2023 before dropping down and kind of ending where they started. We had identical sale prices, like it went up like $200 from December to January. So condo prices still haven't really moved, but they also didn't go down again. Now, transaction volume is a different story. There was more sales in January than we had seen going back to August. So more sales in January than we saw in September, October, November, and December. So this is the action we're talking about in the market that people are actually doing things but we haven't yet seen it impact prices. It's just the sales volume. Here's what the sales numbers are looking like. We had 883 condos sell in the city of Toronto. So a lot more than we saw in December, but pretty close to what we we're seeing the three months previous, but nowhere near what we saw in the first six months of 2023. Now, what about freehold properties? Well, if you take a look at detached properties in the city of Toronto, the average sale price was up year over year 
but it was actually down compared to December. That's weird that it was down compared to December. And this is where I think you're getting a lot of the people saying like, the market hasn't changed. Sale prices haven't changed. But what has happened is transaction volume has gone up and inventory has gone down. And if that trend continues for several months in a row, then you will see some type of price acceleration. Semi-detached properties, if you take a look over here in January, they were slightly ahead what they were in December, but not much. They're the only asset class that actually saw a jump in price from December to January. Now going back here for a second, and you guys can tell me in the comments if you think this is me wearing my realtor goggles or if there's anything behind this theory. But there's potential that what happened, so because there was lower sales volume in December, and perhaps there was luxury home buyers that were buying over $3 million that wanted to buy before the year changed because then they wouldn't have to pay the luxury tax. So potentially the sales that happened in December were weighted heavier because of the outliers. I don't really know if that's what happened. It's a possibility, but transaction volume was up as well in January, but sale price was not. I will tell you from the ground level, actually talking with buyers and sellers, we are getting fairly busy, a lot busier than we were at the end of last year. And it's not just us, it's all the top agents across the city that actually do all the business. People are saying, yes, it feels different now. The numbers are clear. It's not different in sale price yet, but the overall activity seems to be getting there a little bit, at least from what we've seen recently. What do these numbers mean to me? Well, you know, obviously it's all gonna depend on what Bank of Canada does in the summer if they do bring those rate cuts that everybody's talking about, but we could actually have a boring year in Toronto real estate, which I'm actually kind of excited about. We're not necessarily going to see massive ups or massive downs right now. If it keeps chugging along like this, it's going to be a pretty boring year in average price growth in sales volume. It's not going to be a record breaker. It's kind of just going to chug along. And we haven't had that in a long, long time. Still very early days here. People are doing things. They want to make moves. Some properties are getting multiple offers, but I'm not seeing any dumb prices. I'm seeing prices that make sense based on the last comparable sale, maybe slightly higher than what you saw in some circumstances in December, but across the board, obviously not because the numbers actually dipped a little bit in January. The freehold property side of things is where the most amount of demand is. Condos are still lagging behind and that's not going to change unless our inventory drops off even further from here. Thank you for watching today's video. My name is Tom Story and remember, home is where your story begins.